Oh. Uh, <laughs> he's like, like, he only had like three word responses to everything. Apparently, every line he delivered was worth uh, $39,000. Yeah. What? Why? It was like he only delivered like 394 words. Yeah. So based on like his paycheck or whatever, every... Oh, every they just did the math. Like 40 grand. Okay, it's not like a written <laughs> thing. Like <laughs> Yeah, yeah. they were just doing the math on how many words he spoke. They're like, damn, oh, he's okay. a culture bag with these sentences. Like how they do uh, per game, how much is this player making? Yeah. Per game, yeah. yeah. Oh, that's crazy. <laughs> that's insane. That's, a, that's huge money just saying, where's my gun? I need a gun. That's yeah, get me a gun. <laughs> you mad, John? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what what Ray Shimmer say? Uh, wick, wick, wick. Shrimp like. <laughs> oh what? Nah, that's not what they say. But we talking about John Wick today, so I remixed it. Welcome that's back crazy. to the Wild Geek Show, man. Episode ninety. Um, we're gonna be talking about John Wick Chapter Four today. Uh, and it's it was a lot. It was a lot, you know. Um, first impressions for me is my biggest thing was like, all right, it's the third installment, right? We done seen this three times already. Oh, this is the fourth installment, right? Yeah. Uh, we done seen this three times. How are they going to make this one any different? And boy, did they. Because that joint was... That joint was insane. That joint was insane. So first first impression, Chris, what you got for him? Uh, if anyone ever knew me before, I really like... I wasn't the biggest like John Wick one person. I thought mm -hmm. it was it was good. Mm -hmm. Uh and then John Wick two I thought was excellent. Very, very, very good. My favorite. And it has like a lot of the roots that I like about sequels and what I look for in continuation of movies and what brings you back. And I skipped out on three and I recently watched three. <laughs> and I was not a big fan of three <laughs> at all. <laughs> so going in this one, I like I said, I thought one was solid. I think two is amazing. And I mm. thought three was not there. So mm. I was extremely nervous. And it was just chapter four. So I didn't have much to go off of. Yeah. But uh, I was a little worried. I, I didn't expect it to be as great as two. And I thought they were going to be on the similar lines of three. But mm. uh, that thing was crazy yet again. John Wick <laughs> is just a is the craziest action movies you could ever watch in life, to be honest. So. Like, he is an enigma. The best best way I could describe it. I don't look it up. You don't know what enigma is. Don't ask me. Just know that's man. that's the Baba Yaga. <laughs> but I mean, you know, they always say like, "Don't fix what's not broken," right? Or if it's if it's not broke, don't fix it. That's the that's the actual phrase. And. I won't say they did any fixing. I would I would say they just leaned more into John Wick. Like as far as like the the character because this movie wasn't so much about a revenge tour. It was kind of like the idea of John Wick is what they were fighting against, you know? Because my one the other thing that I was thinking about I was like, all right, how are they gonna make me care about this one when this is just like the the premise or the 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 um thing that led to this movie essentially in the in the third movie after the cutscene or whatever was he got shot off a building after he was supposed to get out right that was his way of like technically he could have went been out if he just became a ghost but that's not that's not what john wick does john wick gets revenge so he's like like we said earlier you mad john because i'm pissed off and he's like yeah so now he's just going for the table itself right um so like that being the preference it was like okay i'm excited to see all this because this is gonna be like you know freaking insane as far as like amount of bloodshed and like what he gonna do and all the different places he's gotta go but 
it was like, okay, but the why is not is not as strong because we've seen it already, you know. So like, what what do you think about that as far as like what the motivations were for this movie, and like, do you feel like the it wasn't so much on the responsibility of John Wick to provide that because he's he doesn't say much in general. But as far as like the ideology of like, yo, we got to get rid of this idea of Wick and anything it touches. I mean, for like I said, I, I think John Wick 2 is incredible. I, go, mm-hmm. I think going from one to two is amazing. I really don't like what they did with three. Yeah. To be honest, if I would just throw three away and we just start off with this one, mm-hmm. I, I think it's still amazing. Because at the end of two, John gets uh, excommunicado or whatever from yeah. the the whole thing so he's on the run and then mm-hmm. at the end of three he's shot off a building so yeah it, it's kind of like he's still in that shape where they're still trying to get john mm-hmm. so going into this one i really didn't know what they were doing but one thing i really liked that they started from the beginning was uh and but they do really great with all john wick movies is you kind of don't know where they're gonna go leading into the next john wicks mm-hmm. and leading from three they saved the hotel they they completely save um what's it called the, the um, continental yeah the continental and pretty much in this movie that exact building gets destroyed quickly <laughs> yeah. so it, it's just so interesting because you think oh it's gonna oh, be man. him getting revenge on them mm-hmm. and him getting revenge on winston because he did him dirty at the end of three and it's like nope we we got a whole new story and it's just I love it when movies do that because as soon as you think you know it's going to happen, now you have me in on this ride and I'm just waiting to see the twists, the turns, where's the hill and John Wick as a straight up action movie. Mm -hmm. It's so fast paced that as soon as you, oh, we're not going that route. All right, well, let's get to it. Let's see John Wick be John Wick. So yeah, I I do like the, um, what was the guy's name? The. Oh, the the, uh, Marquis. Marquis, Marquis. Yeah. I, it was a real nice sounding thing. Yeah. I do like the idea that they brought um, the Marquis in. Mm-hmm. And I thought he was a better version of the adjudicator or whatever yeah. that person was in three. He felt more intimidating. And I just felt like him saying, we're going to kill the idea of John Wick. So then this kind of just doesn't happen again. Right. was a much better sell for the whole basis of the movie. Mm-hmm. And then you bring in, it's not like he's the super strong fighter guy. You right. bring in Kane, who is the equivalent of John Wick, mm-hmm. to hunt him down. It was just perfect, perfect, perfect setup. And like I said, I could not foresee that happening yeah. <laughs> in, in four. Right. So as soon as you get there in the beginning, it's like, boom, I got big bad guy's motivation. Big bad guy has the tables, facilities mm-hmm. at the maximum. And then we got big bad guy, yeah. uh, John Wick, a John Wick version. And we see it rather quickly, mm-hmm. how good Kane is. Boom, all the motivation in the world. And now I'm just on this roller coaster of John Wick. And I just thought overall, they set up that story perfectly. They set up everything going into the very first phase of john wick because once it starts going it it, it, it don't stop <laughs> yeah <laughs> and they even killed off uh one of the main characters the uh concierge. The managers concierge yeah it, it was just a lot of good storyline that they drop immediately mm-hmm. that you just don't know leading into the movie right and i just think in my opinion i think they set it up perfectly so yeah and even uh, the the motivation for the big bad, which you know was family. Family is you know family and revenge. You know is crazy. Like those are two things that like will like family enough will make you do some crazy things, right? But when you combine that revenge aspect, that that I don't know that gene that allows John Wick to be John Wick and not you know go sweet is uh it's a setup for you know anything to happen now i think as far as like the big bad himself as like not so much being the big bad but being a friend initially yep 
was like, oh, they playing dirty. I was like, oh, I don't, I don't like that because it's like, you know, throughout all the John Wick movies, everybody's reluctant to defy the hand, right? But it's their relationship with John Wick that we never see. Like this is everything, a lot of stuff that happens like for John Wick as far as like luck wise and who he runs into, it's based off of stuff that he's done in the past and who he's worked with in the past, right? So, you know, that um, level of like grace that we give the story or the plot, it has to be backed by something. Like you can't just like, you know, throw Kane in there and just say old friend and that's like that's that you could tell like they was really like oh dang we we both have lived this life like you could tell right versus like in the third movie where the big bad is uh john wick's biggest fan you know like that's very forgettable and if you haven't seen it like i forgot who he was until i went back and watched it again you know but I don't think I'll ever forget um, Kane and John Wick's like not only just battles, but journey throughout this movie, because we got to see, um, you know, the the different motivations, but also like the the levels of camaraderie that, you know, people have in this system as far as the people that do the actual dirty work, you know. Because nobody likes the table, but they're also Serbian to it because it's a a thing outside of themselves, you know? And um, I like that aspect to it too, because it's one thing, it's one thing to um, just be on a revenge tour and like we're here just to see John Wick do John Wick things. But when you're trying to battle an ideology, with uh loyalty and just you know quote unquote doing the right thing and dog people just being dog people it's just like it leaves you feeling like lifted i was like okay i mean maybe maybe everything is not as rigged as it feels like sometimes you know so um yeah that's my take that's my take on that um so like let, let, let's get in let's get into the fights a little bit because um we talked about the idea of john wick chapter four but we know why everybody here you know and that is to see the scuffle to see what is going to be different from the first three and first things first bro the freaking jacket everybody got a john wick jacket now like it was one thing in the in, in the previous movies where they came in with the the body proof armor but now it's like you know everybody is invulnerable to bullets at least at least you think so Man, mainly the marquees uh people mhm mm yeah but it's like adding that to it for me was just like okay nah this the this is this don't even make no sense it just makes the the world of John Wick more believable because for them like it's one thing to see the main character get away with it but then when you add the rogues and the the bad guys that are able to do the same thing it just kind of like as far as like world building makes it makes it a little bit more cohesive i'll say but um what did you think of like the fights and like doesn't have to be just the straight up duels but just like the overall like choreography and stuff that we got to see because it was a little different this time I mean, I I think it's perfect. I, it's long. Some of them are really long. It may mm -hmm. go on just a bit too long. Yeah. But I kind of got that feeling from John Wick three that some of the fight scenes they they went a little bit longer. Mm -hmm. uh, but this one, there there was something about the runtime of this movie where I didn't really feel like they needed to take anything out at all, but they purposely left some of these fight scenes extra long just to kind of. You know, people have been waiting on this movie, so yeah, I, I feel like it's a bang. little bit more of a yeah service and a just full extent on you know we had a vision for these action scenes and we really 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 want to execute them to the fullest. So mm -hmm. 
overall, I, I loved every single action scene. I loved the fact that the Marquis people literally had the impenetrable suits. Yeah. They covered their face all the time. Sometimes when John was shooting people, even the super armor guys, sometimes when he shot them, uh, it wasn't killing them straight off. You know, he mm -hmm. had to get closer sometimes. Sometimes he got lucky, got them from afar. Mm -hmm. uh, I like the other continental in, what was it? O Osaka, Osaka, Japan. Yeah. That you know, their people didn't even have those types of stuff, but you know, they had the piercing arrows, so it could go through certain stuff. Uh, I just, mm -hmm. all those action scenes in John Wick, I, I just really think they have a aesthetic to themselves that is completely John Wick yeah. alone. Yeah. And I just think for the fourth time, I just don't even care. I'm just excited <laughs> to see. <laughs> another another version of it just right. more craziness more ways to kill people mm -hmm. and i just never get bored with the way they do the john wick kills and I, it's just amazing how we went from the first john wick which feels so grounded right to this one where it's just so incredible even the places they're murdering these people mm -hmm. in this movie isn't is amazing yeah that's and a I crazy mean, statement a but yeah i feel you <laughs> Like we even had a a stair fight that to yeah. me is the probably the most memorable stair fight I've ever seen in my life. Mm -hmm. I, I honestly the first the last third of the movie, yeah, I was amazed from some of these kills. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it it it's just incredible. John Wick is is one of a kind yeah. a movie, and I I really wonder who who thinks there's a better action sequences especially in john wick 4 right it, this one is here yeah because it, it's like you said like there you could tell like as far as like the fan service of like the um actually because in an action movie you expect to be a, a lot of cuts and a lot of like jumping from frame to frame and the camera spinning around but no we got to see full-on like john wick breaking somebody down from you know top to bottom and he was like, like, it was like pistol or gun, uh, Krav Maga, like the way he was fighting. I don't know a better way to describe it because it was like, it was like, he was like Red Hood. I don't know. Have you ever seen Red Hood fight in like the, the animated, um, uh, stuff or like in a video game or whatever, like he was using like the force and inertia because he knew they had body armor or whatever to like set up his grabs and set up his punches and, and holds and stuff like that. And it was like, I didn't recognize that first, but I was like, oh no, nah, he going, he actually going crazy right now. And the, the, the thing about John Wick too is like, um, they always are using opt objects. He's not always like, like he, all, he only needs one gun. You know, because he's going to get at least a couple people with that one. And then he'll, he'll switch to the next one, the next one. But then when you get to the odd objects, the stuff that he just finds in location. And like with the, the nunchucks, that was probably my fit. Like early on, that was like probably one of my favorite moments in the movie um, prior yeah. to the stair fight. Because you could tell like when he picked it up, like he was like, it was like when he first started, he was real like flimsy and like, you know trying to get it warmed up but once he got it warmed up and like got the flow going it was like oh it's like this is real like this is like how you expect like if you had a skill that you haven't used in a long time you know like it just slowly grew and grew and grew and it made you like recognize like oh now nah, he's really i always knew he was like that especially with pistols and stuff like that but like anything for him is a weapon you know? And and I, one thing about the nunchuck scene is it just kind of reminds me of those old movies when they use nunchucks. Mm -hmm. And then, like 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 I said, there's a lot of action scenes that are long in it, but yeah. it just reminds me of those old movies. And we really get to see him utilize it to its fullest and bring back those memories of growing up. And nunchucks <laughs> were like the weapon that had to be in every type of action movie. Yeah, you're like, oh man. But to see it in John Wick, him use it, he used it for a while. Yeah, he kept using these things. Mm -hmm. That's facts. And then like a pencil, something as simple as a pencil. You know. Or, I mean, I love the fact the pencil 
traveled through each movie. Like, yeah, it was a rumor. He killed people, three men with a pencil. Right. And then they made a joke about it. Like, who can do that? And then I think in three, yeah, uh, does he? He actually kills someone with a pencil. Yeah. And then like that. I, I, I one, was, yeah. And then this one, uh, Kane actually is like, oh, a pencil. Right. Yeah, I could use that as well. Like, like I'm gonna hold on to this. <laughs> exactly. And I, I just love that. I love it. Yeah, and Kane, um, like Kane was awesome too because, like you say, he's a the equivalent of, of of John Wick as well. Where, yeah. you know, um, in Osaka, like he was using like doorbell ring lights or whatever to figure out where people were. Because if we ain't, we ain't explained this yet, but Kane is blind, right? He gave up his eyes, um, at some point in his life to the table, and now he walks around blind, um, but. That man can still see, bro. Like it's yeah. He, Kane, he, Kane's the greatest, and he's it's like all the time. It, it's like the it's like the drunken fist. Like is as far as like the best way I can explain it, because of the way like he's shooting, but it's like it's only because he know like where he like where they're at, and as far as like muscle memory type thing, it's not it's not as like uh powerful as like a, a daredevil essentially it was like visually nah, he, he beat, beat up daredevil bro you it's think he clear. beat up da- nah daredevil got retcon he got bro, re- this, daredevil this was different dude now. this dude was untouchable in this movie <laughs> i don't think he broke a sweat fighting anyone i gotta go back no. i don't think he even like got hurt did, did kane ever get hurt in the single movie i don't think it got hurt is a stretch Right, I don't think he got. I don't got, think he, he got, got shot. Hurt. He got shot. Yeah, but that that one doesn't even count. But like, also, he, you guys think about still. who he was fighting too. You know. Yeah, but we've seen John Wick get beat up, like get kicked. Yeah, see, but like, John Wick already like we gotta talk about the stamina. We ain't talked about that yet. John Wick's stamina is off the charts, Captain America level stamina, right? But Bruh, Kane ain't get touched the whole. But Kane, movie. like that's Kane, how great. This think about is. who Kane was fighting though. Yeah, I'm. I, I'm saying. The people Kane fought, right? John Doesn't Wick it? has also fought, and he's been touched by them, like got punched. Oh, oh, and it's like, oh, maybe he's retired or whatever. Kane ain't get touched one time through the whole movie. He was chilling. Kane was going one on one for the most part, uh, or right. like, but the, the but what I was gonna say was, um, one person like the the uh, the main the main guy that I remember from the Osaka uh, fight. Um, who was the manager of the Osaka um, Continental, he was already injured when they fought, right? And even when he fought um, the the rest of, like, the rogues or whatever, like, he wasn't really expecting to fight them. Like, and they was getting punched and stuff like that, but, like, they wasn't, like... The John Wick really was really getting hurt. He was just visually like tired. He he had sunglasses on the whole time. Hey, bro, I do have sunglasses take, on. Not me. <laughs> I don't know, but you might be right. He might not have got hurt. We got we got to do the we got to do the science. But it was like you could tell like he's he's really like that as well. But that's that's the size of the point <laughs> that I was trying to make. But I'll let you have that one because I can't think of a moment other than like I was just speaking to the fact that like the type of people he was fighting, either the people that was already injured. Or just like the rogues that didn't have body armor type thing, yeah. you know. Um, but I guess I guess now um, let's talk a little bit about the marquee because he was a, a the marquee and the the um, Winston because they were the masterminds as far as like the brains behind the operations for both sides, right? Um, now, obviously, the marquee is basically like, you know, martial law for the, the, the table. And he had all the resources, all the capabilities to get rid of John Wick. And for me, it was his demeanor and presence that gave me Joker vibes. And prior to this movie, I didn't know he the one that played it as well um, in the most recent renditions of that, that, those movies. So... There's moments where he does like, like this little, like, I don't even know what you would call it, but like, it's like, it's like a lip thing. I don't know. Do you know what I'm talking about? 
I do not. Like he, it was like it was like the like when he was talking, he would get real close to somebody. And he was like he he was in his bag, and he was like like that, right? Because he just can taste the you could taste like the the viciousness coming all, off of his off of his presence, bruh. But it was just some <laughs> it was so nice, just like that was very that was very Joker like. But uh, his tactics as far as like trying to get rid of him was just sending men after him. John Wick. It wasn't really anything like I was expecting as far as like the, there's a reason why there's, there's a young person at the head of the table at this point. Like he was there um, like from an acting standpoint like he did great but as far as like actual feats in the movie it was just like alright um, King go after him in this place. Alright we need to find him. Um, where's this guy? You know, where's where's Mr. Nobody? We ain't talked about him yet. Yeah, fine, Mr. Nobody. He keeps finding John Wick. We need him on our side type thing. But there's nothing actively that he was doing different as far as strategy that you would think uh, the the Grand Marquis would be doing. And then we get Winston, who always going to find a way to get his side to win, essentially. Like, he found um the the setup for the final act of this movie which was um, in the old ways of um basically calling for a duel to get not only his hotel back but john's freedom so what did you think of those two opposing sides as far as like the brain's operation i mean i think the marquee is is top of top of the line that's this is how you introduce someone from the table mm -hmm. and of course he's not sitting at the table but this villain is what a, a agent from the table should be mm -hmm. and while like i kind of do like the john wick one villain because he's kind of like oh i know about john wick we done messed up <sighs> we're we just done, did a death sentence type thing <laughs> yeah like i feel like like this is how someone from the table who was appointed by them would act a little bit cocky because he, he's a little ambitious like they said in the in the thing but mm -hmm. i one thing i hated about previous john wick movies was how low his bounty was like to, yeah. to run the table these are bajillionaires these are right. these are world politicians and <laughs> i i can't remember i think in john wick 3 his bounty goes to like seven million yeah seven seven million Come the on, most now. dangerous but man on 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 no, earth. <laughs> no way, and I hated yeah. that in John Wick movies. And this mm -hmm. one, I feel like the the marquee got it right. Like, why is this number so low? We starting at twenty big ballers. Like, right. <laughs> we we getting it out there. All bounty hunters. We going after him, and then mm -hmm. boom, we blowing up the Continentals because anybody mm -hmm. who's holding this man there, it, we clearly know the internationally he, he be using the rules against us so you know you can't yeah. do business on we're gonna blow up all of these mm -hmm. uh because we we go to new york we go straight to osaka and he knew yeah. his he, his boy was with him and i think in john wick three he had connections with uh the other manager too so he was just like you know what these different sites we're just going straight to them we're gonna raid them we're gonna pretty much destroy them because that's why they evacuate everybody as soon as marquee mm. agents or the table agents come because they know they mean business and they're going to kill everybody. Yeah. And I just love the fact that, boom, he bumped up that bounty to a legit number that makes it seem like he's worth it because he's already at the top of the board at seven, seven billion, you know? Mm. Like, come on, we're try, we, we trying to get uh, Monkey D. Luffy here. It's got to be <laughs> hot. And then we bring in the tracker who yeah. can track John Wick. Mm -hmm. And he's like, all right, 25 million. Yeah. And then he does the whole, this table thing, which we kind of don't know, but the table just loves to take stuff from people a little bit to like prove their loyalty or like, right. you know, we're not just going to let you slide or walk out of here. We're going to literally hurt Make you, sure. maim you or do something yeah. because we want, we want it to, to stick. Mm -hmm. like that we control you like you're right. under the table and you will serve and be of service you, yeah you're gonna be of service here's some breadcrumbs yeah and i'm just like all right we got bounty hunters tracking john wick we got him himself going after every location mm -hmm. 
And then he's pretty much excommunicated already. So anybody who's looking for twenty million off the street, go yeah. kill John Wick. He an old man. I, right. So I I really love the marquee. I think he he did a great job, and I do love the fact that him and Winston were this young and old yeah. type uh, thinking. Thinking, yeah, because mm-hmm. one is way too ambitious for his own good, and yeah. while he may have all the resources in the world, he's just a little too arrogant. And then Winston mm-hmm. is that tactical he's been there done that and it's proven that winston only cares about getting that hotel back so he's thinking miles ahead of how how can we get a deal how can we get something you know in the movie he snuck in rebuild my hotel yeah rebuild my hotel for me so right i love the marquee i think it's a great villain so so um so as far as like one of the people that i feel like got done dirty because uh, we haven't really talked anything bad that we didn't necessarily like, essentially, um, was Lawrence Fishburne, right? The king. King of oh, the okay. sewers. All this man did in his whole movie was deliver John Wick's laundry. Like, and I'm not saying that he needs to go out there and, you know, get in the scuffle as far as, like, you know, catching bodies and stuff like that. No. That's not what I'm saying. But if if he is going to be the person at the end of John Wick 3, you mad, John? You pissed off? Like, because I'm pissed. Like, I would expect him to be a little bit more involved as far as, like, what they get out of the deal. Because he gave him, like, what? I don't remember how many slices he got in the in, seven. Uh, seven seven um so like why why do you think that uh you know they i guess just left that for him like all right you can bring keep bringing him his suits and a new gun and because that's that's your thing right like winston was out here making moves and got his hotel back and everything but what it what it what did the king get you know, like you, you're, we're here for this conversation of like, all right, what we want uh, when we die or whatever. Like they, they start foreshadowing that. But after that, we don't hear nothing. You know, you got John Wick dog. Like, what are, what are we doing? Like there, there's things like that that fall to the wayside a little bit because the movie is so big. And like as far as like the table itself, it's very forward facing. So I don't understand, like, cause I thought that those two were going to be the ones that's like, okay, you handle above ground. I got underground as far as like how we need to move essentially. But it's kind of like, he just got left in the dark. So how, how do you feel about that? I mean, I, you not care. I, I'm going to stand, I'm going to sound like a stand now, yeah. but I, I think it was perfect. I think, you know, he's the one who rescues John Wick. It mm-hmm. makes sense why they, they didn't find him Cause he's, the the king is underground mm-hmm. he kept him alive and then most majority of the movies taking place overseas it's taking place in osaka and it's taking place in what was it uh not berlin um belarus yeah and, russia um, russia russia and then um france so mm-hmm. i mean the king ain't, ain't gonna be there but then when they when they get to france uh the king helps them deliver the suit and then has the the boat under right. under the sewers of France. So to me, I I didn't think he needed to be more in the movie. I felt like he was appropriately there. And maybe could he have knocked one or two heads off, sure, but I it reminded me of kind of when they first introduced him. He's hey, what's up? You know, I'm I should be killing you. You can't be doing this, but you know, F them all, here's a gun anyway. Like <laughs> You owe me, John, type thing. And that's it, you yeah. know? Some people just move that way. Like, all right, you know, I got me, John Wick, in my back pocket. Don't, you know, don't tempt mm-hmm. me. But, uh, yeah, I I, but like I think he, they thought out the movie very well. I just feel like it would have added something else to it. Because, and it's not like something I'm, like, willing to, like, say, oh, this movie's bad because of this didn't happen, Right. But it was just as far as like the setup and their history, 
I was expecting a um at least something like where it was like a a bigger thing because before this John Wick, that's who he was that's who he was with while he was recovering, getting back right. Like whether it was like some some random thought that John has a flashback or like something where like like when he came back, I was like, I for like forgot you was even like here, you know? So it was just like I don't know. It was a it was a thing that I wasn't I didn't I'm not gonna say it ruined the movie because it didn't at all, but I could say I was expecting a little bit something more because John Wick has always been worldwide, you know? So um even though uh, the the second one was a lot more New York based, but like yeah. um the third one he the fact out. that he yeah, the fact that he was he made it to France says that he could have been there if he needed you know what I'm saying, if he wanted to be. But um the other thing is the the fact that we gotta get to these stairs, bro. Because as much as I love this scene, this is where I notice a glaring not issue, but just like something that I would have changed was that they put a time limit on things, right? As far as like, okay, um the challenge begins at sunrise at six oh five AM or seven oh five, whatever the time was, right? If they had just left it at sunrise, this would have been like, you know, peak peak movie, right? But it was it it's reminding me of when Frieza blew up Namek and said we have five minutes before this planet blows up. And cause we was there for about 15. Like he was when he re- rolled back down the stairs and you realize like he really rolled down the stairs because we saw each level all the way to the bottom. I was like, bro, ain't no way. Ain't no way he gonna get there in time. So what did you think about that, bro? Because I was just like, bro, this joint, this movie is already long, but I guess they made those moments worth it. But it's just like a little bit of like you should just cut that part out because it's just like it kind of it kind of made me um, like step out of like okay wait hold up they said it's only been two minutes during this whole time like I don't know yeah I love it I. <laughs> It just reminds me of like the corniness of action movies, and they do a little bit of it in this yeah. movie earlier when they throw him out the window, mm-hmm. and you're just like deep down, everyone in the audience is like, "These are how action movies are." There's no way this dude is still getting up, walking after he just <laughs> jumped, fell four stories out the window yeah. onto a car, and like this one, he rolls all the way back down the stairs after a extra long 15 minute fight sequence up the stairs he <laughs> rolls all the way they make it awkwardly long as he's yeah. rolling down and then they introduce kane and kane's like we got three minutes to get you up these stairs and it just Cat, reminds bro. me Cat. of so many action movies where they they always say there's only like one minute to disarm the bomber mm-hmm. we are uh, I have five minutes to to get to the plane and somehow in the movie it always happens and when they did that, I was just like, <laughs> okay, sure. But yeah. a, 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 another amazing sequence where now we went from just John Wick, now we get him and Kane. Mm-hmm. And then I was just like, all right, I got to see this. How, how, how are we doing it? And then we got a hilarious uh, scene with nobody yeah. and his dog. Yeah. I, I just literally that I was like, this is this is an action movie. This, this thing is, is ridiculous. <laughs> Yeah. And like I said, there, there's definitely are scenes where maybe they shouldn't make it that long, mm-hmm. but it works. It it feels very very good if you're a John Wick fan and you're here mm-hmm. for the fourth movie because deep down it kind of feels like this movie or this series probably wouldn't happen if that first movie really took off. And like I remember when John Wick one came out, no one was really really hyped about it, but once people saw it, they were like, "Yeah, oh Keanu Reeves, he liked that." I like. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah, you gotta see that John Wick, and I was like, "All right, I'll, I'll catch it. I'll catch it." I saw all the John Wicks recently, so I didn't even hear about it. Like, oh, really? I, well, I seen John Wick three when it first came out, but mm-hmm. before then, I never even knew about John Wick like at all. Yeah. So it's, exactly. it's it skipped over my radar. I was too busy watching Kung Fu Panda. 
You know what I'm saying? Oh, like, that's that was my vibe back then. But um yeah, man. Uh as far as like I don't I don't really got anything else. Like the, the I feel like scene. Oh yeah, I bro. Oh, bro. The, penguin. <laughs> the penguin or is, the or see uh um uh, some people was comparing him to uh, um, um Kingpin. Dang. Kingpin, yeah, 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 yeah. I don't know how I forgot. We skipped over that. I don't know how I forgot about that. That that's another gripe I have. That that scene was way too long. That was way I, too long. Yeah, I if anyone says they have way too long scenes, I I would probably agree. Yeah, but like, I like the okay. premise. I like the premise because it's like getting back to his roots in Russia or whatever with the Russian families. Yeah. Um, but like that whole sequence, poker game to extended fight to extend extended fight to find and proof to like you know what i'm saying like that be the catalyst of like all right now i finally got the last check mark as far as what i need to challenge the marquee you know like yep. that i think that sequence is good but it was just forever yeah it, it like i said i 100 percent agree that pretty much every single fight scene in it is probably too long mm -hmm. but then again i also think <laughs> dang this is this is peak action stuff that yeah each of the fight scenes are literally so amazing and probably the best versions of it i i'm not sure if it's my favorite club fight scene because i think it's two that has the best one i can't mm. really remember but john wick has these different club fight scenes maybe it's one i think it's one uh but this club fight scene it just gave me so much kingpin batman-esque <laughs> vibes and then I, it was the I gold love teeth. that. They had the waterfall, the gold teeth. This dude was massive. I, yeah. I kept thinking like, Dang, he was moving. He was moving nice too. He was kicking. Yeah. There's no way a man that big can kick. <laughs> you got to be kidding me. He did a spin kick. I was like, John Wick yeah. dead. John yeah. Wick going to die. But uh, they had that waterfall scene. And then when they, even when John Wick was fighting, mm -hmm. people in the club were like, Oh man, and then other people were just like, Yeah, like, it's another yeah, Tuesday. Hey, Tuesday. <laughs> we up on a Tuesday. So yeah. it, it's just it a lot of this movie just reminds me of like <laughs> you would definitely throw this on and say, like, what's the best action movie? Be like, boom, it's John Wick 4. Yeah. And then you just if you just broke down everything and be like, where you see this at, huh? Where, where you see anything like this before? Oh, yeah. Batman better. Dude. He he beating up Kingpin like it's nothing. Like Yeah. Crazy. Crazy. And I also like the the whole meeting of the minds that, that happened there too. Because oh, establishing the fight. That and just all their different motivations and stuff like that that also went into it. Um I know we ain't really talk about uh Mr. Nobody that much, but him as like the anti-hero or whatever in this one where it's like he's kind of still like for himself in this yeah. whole world like he was them essentially back in the day uh, when i'm speaking yeah. of john wick and um Kane. Kane. so like he's like watching two legends fight you know essentially but even before that like the one of my favorite scenes in this movie was um right before the stairs when they were in that in that abandoned building because of the way that they shot it because it's like oh yeah the the thing about this movie is like they continuously surprise you with um not so much like what's going on in the fights because they kind of show you what's going to happen before it does like with the shotgun and stuff like that um like they kind of warn you about that and then it actually happens and it's like yo I was not thinking they was going to shoot it like this, right? Because this time it was like we were watching like a, um, a OG a video, like game. video game. Yeah, ex exactly. And um, it was so cool to look because it was like a seamless transition where, you know, we start initially like, um, like heavy on the character because this is still a chase, right? Like this man, John Wick been running for like the last hour. Um, since he got off the boat, right? But it's a seamless right. transition from that to uh, the camera slowly but surely lifting as it's getting a grander view 
of the entire building and an entire fight because it's like it's already run down but then you get to see the floor plan and see like um enemies come to them right before they even get there and then you add mr nobody and his dog into the mix and it's just like boom a whole another element you know and that was just like i was just like nah ain't no way this is real bro like this is like yeah. this is like john wick franchise bro freaking the best the best like action franchise because like who else is doing that nobody you know and um yeah that was that was my take on that (laughs) that's all that's all i got for that but um the kingpin fight was cool too say that (laughs) but uh yeah other than that, we got a, a post credit scene that I don't want to. I don't think I want to talk about that because I feel like you should just watch it because there's nothing really to yeah, say sure. other than like, uh, you know, stay to the end because it's just like when I saw it, I was like, oh, dang, I completely forgot about this, you know. Yeah. And what does that say? Does a John Wick continue? Who knows? The world does, you know. So um, that's all I got, man. You got anything else? Oh, uh, we ain't talking about I want to talk about like I think as far as the, breaking down the movie. But. Yeah, like uh, Kane mm-hmm. and the way they entrapped him to chase after John and the motivation for Kane's character mm-hmm. and kind of how like throughout the movie it's all led up to a tension that Kane and John Wick are gonna have to meet at the end. Oh and yeah, Kane we is not gonna that. stop because. You know, he, it's his family on the line, and John Wick is not going to mm-hmm. stop because revenge is on his mind. You know, he's gonna yeah. he's gonna get to the table. He's he's gonna do whatever it takes, mm-hmm. and it becomes somehow becomes this duel. Yeah, to to purposely stop all of this, mm-hmm. and even at the very end, it comes down to John Wick and Kane, and it just feels like a, another scenario where wow. We do not know what's actually going to happen because yeah. Kane has all the reasons <laughs> to just murder John Wick right. and go about his day. John Wick, they even explain it. John Wick has no motivation mm-hmm. to win this thing. Yeah, It's kind of like, where does this ever stop? And you, you kind of wonder the whole time, John, like, what, what, do you, what are we really doing here? Like, yeah. And I just love the fact that as you watch the movie, you kind of can tell it's going to come down to John Wick and Kane at the end. Mm-hmm. And then it becomes like a impossible scenario in which both john wick and kane cannot win and i'm like yeah. oh my god i wonder who who it's gonna come down to and i was just waiting i was waiting because yeah. the last thing you would think like after watching the whole movie of it being this fast paced like action packed russell mania i don't know like a better word to say but just like craziness right to slowing down at the end for it to be a shootout right but not just like a regular shootout this is old school 30 yard pace you know like, like a western like western so... yeah even the guns ah. like it was classic right it's like classic um, movies yeah and i was i was i was sitting there like bro there's like you said there's a this is a lose lose scenario yeah and the way that it ended, I don't know. <sighs> it's just like, I, I, I know we, we do a lot of these reviews, and this is like the type of stuff where I say like, when you go into the third act, mm-hmm. there has to be some type of tension that built up through the movie that leads yeah. to the final scene where you're like, you think you know how it's going to end, but mm-hmm. like, really do you? Like, you've seen the whole movie, you're like, dang. Like, yeah. Kane just rescued this man to get him up the stairs, and he's like, Bro, you know what I came here to do. I'm, I can't lose. Right. And it, you wonder, like, John, did you make a decision? Like, what? where does this stop? If you're now going to kill Kane, you know his mm-hmm. history. You know he got purposely dragged back into this. Yeah. And I just love the way they topped it off where, like, like, how? Like, if you go to this I know movie, you don't want to say it. I know you yeah, don't want to say it. I don't want to say it. Because <laughs> yeah. it's just like, even I was sitting there like, oh my God. It's lose lose. Like, yeah. It's going to be lose lose. And I'm going to walk out yeah. here like, dang, I yeah. can't believe that. So yeah. I, I just really love it when movies actually think through 
how they're going to top it off and then they incorporate it all. And I just think the writers, Freaking the directors, they brain, definitely bro. took their time. They took their time and they did it right. Yeah. It was it was big brain, y'all. Like And because nobody also had a shot at his goals too. Mhm. And I, I just love it, it. I just really feel like they thought about every single bounty hunter in this, the marquee and uh, Winston's yeah. uh, goals. And it came clashing at the end. And you're like, dang, dang, dang. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was great. That was great. I'm glad you said that. I'm glad you said that. Because I, I don't know. Like, like you said, it's a lot. It's a lot. It's a lot. Like, bro. And I can't wait to watch it again on HBO whenever it happens. Um, but yeah. So, uh, what would you what would you rate this joint, Chris? I, I'm gonna give it a ten. I, I, I think it's a masterpiece. I think it's the best John Wick. Okay. I am a big John Wick two person. I think John Wick two Me is too. better than the first one, even though people say John Wick one is the the probably the best of the best. Mm. Uh, to me. Uh, I think it's going to go down as one of the best action movies mm. ever. I really can't even think of another scenario in which Bullet Thor is not the best. <laughs> I think it has great characters. I think they do a good job with the villain. I mm. really think they do a good job with introducing new characters that we've never even seen yeah. and somehow made me care about in three hours. Mm-hmm. To be honest, I like all the characters that they introduced. Yeah. Uh, and again... One thing that's amazing in John Wick, they expanded this world with the table and the continental. And again, in John Wick 4, I just don't know. Like now we're getting spinoffs of these movie, the, this series. Mm-hmm. And it just makes so much sense because they keep adding more and more. And I just think they have so much to explore. And for this fourth installment, I really think they knocked it out the park. It is a little bit too long, but I'm going to let that slide. I'm going to let that slide. <laughs> working with the buff. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I wouldn't say it's a buff, but <laughs> I, I'm just thinking overall movie yeah. as a movie. I think it's up there. I think it got a good story. It got it. It looks amazing. Yeah. John Wick is crazy. He doesn't <laughs> deliver that many lines, but right. he is John Wick. He is the boogeyman. And, you know, the boogeyman got to retire sometimes. So I'm going to give it a masterpiece as a 10. Dang. Okay. Okay. We make it history today making history today because i'm giving it a 9.5 nice i i would have gave it a 10 i start when i left the theater i started at a 10 because of all the reasons we've already said but for me it's just too long like there's it drags it drags on and maybe in a different setting and in a different like just yeah, just a different setting. Like, I wouldn't mind it as much. But there was moments in the movie where I, personally, I was like, like especially in the car scene, like the chase scene of which far as trying to get to the Apple Tower, where I was like, bro, we're still, it's still going. And we're seeing, like, like I don't say we've seen the same scenes, but, like, the thing about this movie was, like, you know, you've seen one John Wick movie, you've seen them all type thing oh 100 percent. right so it was like okay how are they going to battle that with this being the final one and they did a great job like it's still still a great movie right but those 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 pacing issues for me hold uh uh enough of a a weight to make it a 9.5 because i was just sitting there like it was times where i was like like i was drifting I was drifting and we saw that joint <laughs> early in the morning too. So yeah. it was just like, it was, it was mesmerizing in that sense because like I was watching what was happening, but it was just like the same kind of thing, you know? Um, but the aspect that I do like about it was, um, you could actually tell like, this is John, like Keanu Reeves, the person, like besides like the you know the the people working with him obviously he's going to let them do whatever they need to him but he got that muscle memory where i wonder how many takes it took to get i feel like there was some freestyle going in there you know like as far as like what needed to happen because as far as like when to go down that's a skill in itself you know to make it look good 
Um, but that's something that I don't feel like gets talked about a lot. A lot of people talk about just like his skill with the guns himself itself. But I think that combination of like what I saw with the with the the gun Croft Maga, <laughs> well, it's a little different in this joint that I really I did like. But you know, barring the pacing issues, you know, this movie was freaking amazing, bro. Um, and then last thing, last thing that doesn't necessarily spoil anything but um that i thought about like while we were talking was um the osaka manager and his daughter where the uh the the thing that made us care about king right and his daughter because we saw his daughter right and we know that his daughter is not necessarily in his life because it's a line of work but then we saw a daughter that was in a line of work with her father and her father making the ultimate sacrifice because technically they could have both got away, but he made sure that she would live because of the honor bound code that him and Kane had together as far as like, you know, the vibe, like he's not going to get, he's not going to do you like that. But he's like, if you try me, Kane was like, if you try me, I will put you down. But like, you know, it is what it is. And that for me, like foreshadow what we saw um, later on in the movie and what made us care more about Kane's like motivation because mm -hmm. it's like we saw like oh what it could look like you know what I'm saying and um, yeah I'll leave it at that I'll leave it at that but you got anything else before we get in what we geeked about man no that, that's all good alright Chris what you geeked about bro <laughs> <laughs> I'm good on action movies, I guess. <laughs> uh, I did take one of your recommendations. I, mm -hmm. I started Secession okay, on okay. Uh, HBO Max. Yep. And I think we're about five episodes in. And it's solid. It's solid. Mm -hmm. uh, it's. I wouldn't say it's like gripping or anything. It's, yeah. it's just kind of like, oh, it's okay, messy. that's happening. Yeah, it's kind of messy. Yeah. And, <laughs> and like, it's, it, it's solid. I, I, I don't even know how to describe it really. It's just yeah. like, okay, let me see this family get messy and who's who's messier today, who's yeah. messier tomorrow. And wait a minute, what why are you doing this? You get crazy, bro. Yeah, so <laughs> uh I think the season four came out recently, so uh, hopefully by the Sunday. end of the month. Ah, uh, okay. Like the first episode dropped Sunday. So yesterday. Oh, so it's episodic. Yeah, every week. Awesome. So yeah, I'll uh, catch I'll up. Probably, yeah, I, we gonna catch up, and mm -hmm. it, it, it's solid. It's it's not groundbreaking in my opinion, but I've heard very good reviews, and mm -hmm. I know that you saw it. So the yeah. fact that you saw it and you gave it an okie dokie, I'm a, <laughs> I'm gonna watch it because right now it's either this or I go back to the One Piece grind, and I did restart that. But you know, Dang. sometimes you just want to throw on something, yeah, and, and see new season. You're like, all right, let me go ahead and see see what everybody's <laughs> talking about. So. What you geeked about, G? Uh, so I finished The Bear recently, and that um, Amazon, uh, Hulu, it's on Hulu. Hulu, Hulu. Yeah, uh, and that that uh new season's coming out too. So Bear was solid. The Bear was solid. It's it's um, I won't say it's like a it's like a show based on like um a kid gets a not a kid, but a guy gets a, a restaurant from his brother that was run down and stuff like that. And he got, he's trying to make it fancy, like his teachings or whatever, but it's good. I I liked it. I liked it a lot. It's got some good monologues in there. Um, but another yeah, thing, no, I don't think it's oh. that in succession. No, no, no. All right. Um, I have to switch up real quick after this. What do you nah, it's a whole different type of vibe though. Like okay. it's a, it's a whole different type of vibe. Uh, but also snowfall snowfall has been going crazy every freaking week bro uh somebody major just died and i won't say who it was because y'all watched that joint but it was sick bro like i i'm gonna miss i'm gonna miss that person um but that i don't know how this joint going in though like it's at the point where like it's like that scene in the office where um they do the Mexican standoff or whatever, 
and they all got finger buns and Dwight has a crossbow and it's just like it's crazy like you don't know who to like you can't trust nobody and it's it's just it's sick um as far as stuff that's coming out next I never we still ain't seen Shazam we're waiting for that to come out but I mean on uh streaming but I heard a bad review about Dungeons and Dragons movie and I'm scared now I'm scared it's gonna be bad but they got some good actors in there so I just just like I still I'm still gonna go see it um anime anything from anime uh lock is done oh blue lock season two it's gonna be lit uh, I, I i guess i can binge that then yeah blue lock I'm season blue lock season two is gonna is gonna be insane um they're bringing out all the stops or like the world like the best in the world like archetypes is basically gonna be in the, in the next season but it's it's one of those shows. It's one of those animes where like like how how I watch Baki. Like I'll just be watching random episodes from Baki like throughout the day, and I would just mm. I would definitely watch Blue Lock like that. I'm gonna watch it in um dub this time though. Next time I watch it <laughs> because I just I want to see if that's, that's any different. You know, I um, I did that with uh Food Wars. Oh, Food Wars is crazy. Food Wars is crazy. I watching that twice is kind of wild. I'm not gonna cap. I'm not gonna cap. But hey, oh, I'm gonna let you I rock. Expo- I expose myself real quick. All right, I'll see y'all next week. Nah, I nah. Go. Nah, you good, Chris. That show is good. That, sh- that anime is good. That anime is good. Um, but <laughs> that's that's all I got uh for this week, man. Appreciate y'all for tuning in once again. Oh. Last thing I'm geeked about, I dropped my comic book podcast. That's available on YouTube now. The Weekly Pool is what it's called. And uh, yeah, we're going up over there as well. So yeah, if you if you like this podcast, hit the like button. If you want to see more podcasts and more clips from the podcast, check out the YouTube, man. Um, if you listen to your favorite audio platforms, rate the podcast, leave us a review. Um, and uh, yeah, man. We'll see y'all next week. Big eat. Peace. Later, y'all.